sitting there in Taiwan, for example, India is not a formal ally of the United States. So if something was to happen, if China was to invade, it's not necessary that India is going to be, is not treaty bound to rush to uh, America's defense or, or, or to Taiwan's defense for that matter. But to the extent that India is being able to protect its turf and tie up ex securities or taking care of security in the Indian Ocean while others are focusing on the Pacific, it is adding to the overall uh, it, it, to international security in some sense. Is that the way it is being seen and interpreted in countries like Taiwan? Um, so to be frank, what I've been hearing in Taiwan is that uh, India's role in the type of crisis that is most worrisome to people in Taiwan, which is the type of military coercion or even over conventional attack on Taiwan. In such scenarios, India is going to be at best a marginal player militarily. My, uh, my interest, my, my research here is mostly about uh, the extent to which India can play, as you're alluding to, um, a role sort of on the margins of such a conflict and essentially in a non-military way. So when you talk about tying up uh, uh, Chinese attention elsewhere in other theatres, or when you talk about India playing a, a positive security role elsewhere, like in the, in the Indian Ocean, that's all true, but that's not going to uh, affect seriously the outcome of coercion against Taiwan. What may matter more, the type of role that India could play uh, okay. more meaningfully is in non-military uh, issues. Uh, and certainly the type of, of long-term capability development that the state visit is, is about uh, is the sort of thing that will make India a more attractive partner to Taiwan and a more attractive alternative to other countries across the region. Right, because I, I'm going to not try and get closing comments from everybody as, as, as we're running out of time, but uh, Ambassador Singh, defence is only one part of it. Um, the rise of India and the building of capabilities and the partnerships that we have seen being discussed over the last few days, it builds capability and capacity to solve other problems as well. I mean, climate change being the most obvious of them. How can you handle uh, you know, other issues around technology? How can you deal with AI? How can you make sure that China is not dominating supply chains, for example? Now, that's an area where Taiwan and, and India might, might find you know, shared ground in. How do you make sure that semiconductors or rare earth isn't entirely controlled by China? So it, there's a lot of areas that can be worked together. Ambassador Singh? Yes, and also I think one aspect that is not getting enough attention is that there is value to the US itself uh, from the India relationship. You know, for example, the US has now invested more than $54 billion uh, US companies in India, but Indian companies have invested more than $40 billion in the US economy and have a presence across 50 states, uh, generating more than 400,000 jobs directly, and then there is indirect job creation impact. And then, you know, in many areas, while the IP is with the US companies, Cutting edge R&D and technology development work is being done by them using Indian human tech capital, both in US and in India. So there is a value they get from the India partnership because as they are facing the challenge from China uh, and in many areas of the emerging technologies, China is said to be ahead of the US. Then a partnership with a country like India with 1.4 billion people and the amount of uh, technical human capital that India brings to the table uh, will be very, very uh, important for the U.S. So if you saw, for example, in the joint statement, aside from the kind of technology transfer that would happen to from the U.S. or the investments that the U.S. companies are they're doing, there was a specific reference to investments, $2 billion worth of investment, new investments that Indian companies are going to do in the U.S. Yeah. So this whole debate about whether America first and Atman Nibir Bharat would be in conflict. I think that argument has been addressed that both gain by coming together for this partnership uh, and uh, by building interlinkages of this kind. All right, uh, Mr. Pratik Kumar, let me try and get some final thoughts from you, wrapping up what we have seen in the last yeah, few days. I think for a state visit, this turned out to be a very substantive visit. Definitely the relationship is going to be on a high, uh, higher trajectory. There's no doubt about it. The quality of the relationship has changed. It is, it is deepened and it has become 
it is expanding. Uh, my only skepticism is about uh, jumping into conclusions at this stage in terms of the strategic dimensions of it. I think India is, uh, my own, my assessment is that India is playing its cards very close to its chest as it should be because there is so much volatility, there is so much of uncertainty in the international situation and uh, we are likely to get caught up in that in a way that can turn out to be very dangerous and risky for us. For example, if we, we haven't touched on the Russia-China axis yeah. that is building up dramatically. And uh, now, you know, a two-front war is no longer of academic interest alone. It's a palpable reality, you know. So right. India, has, uh, uh, India has to weigh in all these matters. That is why I ex express skepticism about the trend of discussions we had on all that right. score. Yeah. Fair enough. Arz Arzan Tarpura, uh, let me just get your overall um, summing up, if you like, of, uh, of the state visit. Yeah, look, I mean, it was, as, as, as has been said already, it was obviously a very positive state visit. I would suggest it's the most uh, important uh, set of agreements that have emerged since the 2005 civil nuclear deal. Uh, it's not quite transformative on that level, but it's certainly the, the, the most important since then, precisely because it gets beyond the sort of transactional dialogues and arms transfers type of relationship that it used to be. It's now talking about changing the defense industrial base in the US and in India so that they can integrate better. So it's a, it's a, it's if, it, if there is follow through, if there is implementation, this will set a precedent for a new way of relating to each other uh, that, that we haven't seen yet. So in that sense, it's a very important All right. inflection point. All right, Arzan. Indrani, you get the final words on this show. <laughs> Um, well, I think uh, this was a visit that uh, took a lot of work on both sides and I think both sides have delivered because there is a, there has been a level of strategic trust in each other and that will be the building blocks for a new relationship um, that is much more equal than what we had been used to. We are putting behind the ghosts of technology denials and that is very important because all foreign policy is technology now and the future is technology. So as long as you have these two countries working together on innovation, on technology um, in the future, pulling their weight almost equally, I mean given the asymmetry between the powers, I think this is a trajectory that will be very different. All right, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Uh, if a lot of what is happening in the world is about technology, AI is coming, space, everything, it's all about technology. And if these two countries start working really closely together and in an integrated manner in technology, that partnership will build itself. But it's been a, it's been a remarkable visit, uh, as I started by saying, a symphony which for all reason has paid itself out really well, discordant note or not, it's paid itself out really, really well, and it will be remembered, I think, as a landmark visit. This was the India story. We'll be back next week.